Hey everybody, this is A7XFan Ben, and I'm going to show you how to play Pirate's Constructible Strategy Game using the complete game rules. So, you can pick any build total you want. I've got a couple fleets here. I'm not going to play by the standard Ireland rules because I don't really like them. This is just going to be a sh short tutorial to go over some of the basic rules and the ones I didn't go over in the Start Here video, which is part one of this series if you didn't watch it already. And so I'm just going to, I've got some 40 point fleets here, I'll just go over them real quick and then I'm going to get started. So the Rum Runner is the in the Pirate Fleet, it's Pirates versus Americans in this game. And I've got the crew off to the side just in case I need to give a close up on the, on the cards of the ships. So this ship has Schooner and Parley as the keywords. So I'm also trying to demonstrate some, uh, some abilities that weren't seen already. And I also have a keywords playlist. So you can check that out too. And then this one's a galley, the Freedom's Hand. This one's a good gunship. It's got solid speed, got the good cannons, then the sniping ability. So that one has a captain, you can see him right there. And then I've got the Cutlass is the next ship. This is another schooner. This one's generally better as a gunship. I'm kind of doing a kind of doing an exploring role though. This one's a gold runner. It's got an explorer board, good uh, cargo speed and guns. And the Cutlass is going to be towing the Widowmaker Flotilla, which is like a floating gun platform that must be towed. And then here's the card for that one. So it's got 4S cannons, but then extended range. So it's got like S plus S range on those 4S's. And then for the American fleet, I've got the Gold Eagle, which is a schooner. This is the main American gunship. In this, uh, in this fleet, she's got a captain and a helmsman to be a good gunship. And then the Pawtucket is just a basic gold runner here. This is an American ship I find kind of underrated. But in this case, she's got a helmsman, so she's going to be one of the gold runners, along with the Carolina, which is a basic ship. Um, S plus S speed, solid cargo, only seven points, partly because of the no ability. So the Carolina is kind of another underrated American ship that I find pretty useful in most circumstances, especially as a cheap, uh, a cheap gold option. So I've got my setup here. I'm just going to put the ship's at the islands, I'm just going to make these the home islands, um, right above the deck plates, just to make things simple. This is just going to be a short little tutorial where I go over a few things that weren't in the in the start here video. So I'm going to set it up. Freedom's Hand is the gunship for the pirates, and then I know the Cutlass is faster than the the Rum Runner, so I'm going to put the Cutlass at a at a more advanced spot on the home island. So if I put the Rum Runner over here, she might delay at least one of the other two ships when they're starting to sail out. And the regular rules call for um, eight coins worth 30 gold, but I've just got some random coins here. I'm going to mix them up. I'm not using unique treasures in this game. They are a fun way to add some spice and flavor to the game, but I'm not using them because this is designed to be a shorter video, and they, they add some complexity and make the game longer. And... Uh, and I don't really want to get into uh, the pirate code in this video, <laughs> so which is the frequently asked questions, uh, which is now kept up by Wolf, one of the long-standing members of the community. And I've got three coins there, and then I'm I am going to demonstrate terrain in this game. You can see it up there by that other wild island. Since that one's surrounded by terrain completely, I'm going to put six coins up there. So there's twice as much gold up there. Got a couple whirlpools. The islands are really close together. Normally you do about 2L or more. These ones are only L. But then it's about 2L to the next one from the first wild island. So I'm just going to roll for initiative. So we'll see who goes first. Pirates get a 4. And the Americans get a 6. So the Americans go first. And I'm going to have the Pawtucket be given the first move action. So you've got L and S on the back of the deck plate cards here. It's good to have a spare. I always use this one in most of my games physical games. So the Pawtucket's going to go out to this island and dock. She doesn't have an explorer, so she has to wait next turn until she can be given an explorer action. And then the Carolina here, she has a base move of S plus S. No helmsman on this ship, so that's all she's got right there. And then the Gold Eagle is going to protect the Pawtucket, so she's also going to dock at this wild island. So she's kind of blocking the Pawtucket, because I know the Pawtucket's going to pick up gold next turn. Uh, the Gold Eagle is kind of like escorting her 
to the island, because I know the pirates might attack right now, which I think they will. So here's the pirate first turn. Uh, the Freedom's Hand is going to move L and then S. And it looks like I've got both cannons in range. So you measure from where the die is on the mast to any part on the enemy ship, as long as the shots don't overlap your own masts. Um, in this case, they don't. I've got both two S's in range. So the Freedom's Hand is going to go ahead and shoot at the Gold Eagle. So I need higher than a 2, because it's a rank 2 cannon. So I got a 4, so that's a hit. And then I got a 2. So one hit, one miss. Gold Eagle loses one mast. And I was able to do that with the Freedom's Hand's captain, of course. So this is a basic crew, 3 points. It allows you to move and shoot the same move action. So the Freedom's Hand was given a, a move action, and then due to the captain, she can shoot as part of it um, without having to be given a separate shoot action. So the captain is the best combat crew in the game. Then I'm going to go... I'm going to go to the Cutlass here. The ship's going to move S, and then L, and she's going to dock at the island. So this is key moment here, because the Cutlass does have an Explorer. So kind of similar to Captain Explorer lets you move and then explore a wild island as part of the same move action. Explorer is a one point crew, unlike three for Captain. I don't like Explorers that much, but in this case it's quite useful. Um, so the Cutlass is going to look at all the coins. I got some real good ones. I got one, six, and seven. And then the Cutlass has three cargo minus the Explorer is two cargo spaces open. So I'm going to take the six and the seven. So I got 13 gold on the Cutlass, and uh, if you don't know already, 7 is the highest coin you can get. So the Cutlass is loaded. It's got a ton of gold. It might even be enough for the Pirates to win, depending on what's on that island. Maybe not, but we'll see. And uh, the Widowmaker is its own ship, so it's given shoot actions independently. Um, but it looks like maybe one's in range. Let me just measure this one more time here, just to make sure. Yeah, one cannon's in range on the, on the, on the Gold Eagle. So I'm going to shoot a 1 4S cannon on the Widowmaker, and it hits. So the Gold Eagle is already down to one mast, and the Pirates have a really good start, despite going second. And uh, the, the other cannons aren't in range. Flotillas, they don't block their own lines of fire, but it's not. the other cannons aren't in range, even with the extended range keyword. So next ship is the Rum Runner. She's probably going to head to the to the far island in the north here. So she's got S plus S speed and some good durability along with the parley keyword. And that's the pirate's first turn. So now I get to go back to the Americans and play their turn. Try to zoom in a little bit here. See close up of the action. I like to leave mass in the water. Makes it more realistic. Gives a nice historical feel to the game. Um, so the Americans, they're not doing as well as they had hoped. The Pawtuck is still gonna explore. Um, she's gonna take a look at this. They don't know what this is. Now they see it's a one. And then the Pawtucket has a treasure trading ability. So after looking at treasure on Wild Island, you can trade any one treasure from that island for a random treasure on any other Wild Island. Then you have to load the traded treasure. So I'm going to throw the one over here, over to this island, and trade for this coin here. Oh, which is also a one. So they didn't benefit from it. But that's like the island treasure trading ability. Um... And it's a, it's a pretty good one, generally, especially if you can get rid of, like, negative bad UTs that uh, hinder your treasure runners. There's bad UTs and positive UTs, so watch out for those. Most of them are positive, but some are bad to find. Um, so the Pawtuck is kind of disappointed. She's got four cargo, minus one coin, and then the Houseman, so she's got two cargo spaces open still. Um, Carolina is going to... Going to keep moving north here towards this other island. She's going to be in a race with the with the Rum Runner, it looks like. And then the Gold Eagle is going to shoot at the Freedom's Hand. One thing about the Gold Eagle, she has the Reverse Captain ability. So after she resolves the shoot action, she can move as a free. This can't be combined with the Captain ability, because if the Captain ability specifies a move action. You can, sh you can move and then shoot as part of a move. Here, you can shoot and then move but as part of a shoot. So since they are since they originate from different actions, you can't combine them in the same action. You'd have to give the ship an extra action, which I don't have any of those abilities in the game here, probably because it's a basic game, and partly because if one fleet had an extra action, 
uh, ability available, they might win easily, <laughs> potentially. Not always, but um, it's a really good, those are really good abilities in general. So the Gold Eagle is gonna, she's got her three out clearly in range. She's gonna shoot at the Freedom's Hand and she gets a six. So that hits. So the Americans are having a okay turn. They wish they got better than a one with the trade, but Freedom's Hand loses a mast and Gold Eagle is now gonna move. So she shot and now she can move back home to go dock and repair because she has that reverse captain ability. So when ships are docked at their home islands, they can't be shot at. So the Freedom's Hand's kind of out of luck here. And galleys, this is a galley. That Part of that keyword is that galleys can't do damage by ramming. So she can't even ram the final mast off the Gold Eagle. And the Gold Eagle will probably just repair it on her turn anyway. So now it's back to the pirates. It's time for their second turn. And I think the Freedom's Hand is kind of going to go for broke here. She's going to ram the uh the paw tuck it here so when you ram and board this is a new concept for this video that i didn't talk about in the last one this is part of the complete game rules rather than start here so it's a little more complicated but not too bad the order of operations is move shoot ram board move shoot ram board so think about it as so you're sailing along and then you shoot at the enemy ship as you're approaching them or passing them whatever and then, and then the contact is made after that once you've unloaded your cannons. So then that's the ram, and then the boarding happens at the end, of course, after the after the ship to ship contact of the ram. So so I moved. Now since the freedom hand freedom's hand does have a captain, I can shoot. So the 2S cannon, and I was trying to roll it between the ships, but oh well. Um, so a 3S hits. So that hits the pot tucket. Normally I'd roll for ram damage, which we'll probably see later in the video, but galleys can't do damage by ramming, so none of that. But the, And then boarding, basically either player can initiate a board. Um, so the pirates are going to initiate. If they did not, the Americans can choose to. Um, after a ship rams another ship, uh, either player can initiate uh, a boarding party as a free action. Players whose turn it is decides first. Each, each player rolls a d6 and adds the result to the higher to the number of mass remaining on his or her ship involved in the ram. Player with the highest total can eliminate one crew on or take one treasure from the enemy ship. So, the pirates are trying to steal the coin on the pot tucket or eliminate her helmsman. Probably take the coin. So the freedom's hand is going to board. So she has one mast plus the three is four. So that's her score for the boarding party. Now it's the Pawtucket's turn and she gets a four. So she has two mass left plus four is six. So the Pawtucket wins six to four. That's how boarding works. And now the Freedom's Hand either loses a coin or a crew. I usually have the winner decide um, which result happens, um, but that's a house rule. So anyway, but the Freedom's Hand only has one cargo aboard. She's got a captain. So the captain dies He's eliminated in the action. So he dies, um, he's killed in action in the boarding party. Normally, uh, the Freedom's Hand would be pinned to the Pawtucket and wouldn't be able to move away, but the galley keyword uh, allows you to not be pinned as well. So um, so now the Cutlass is gonna go home because the Freedom's Hand action is finally done. Cutlass is gonna go home and she can unload 13 gold. So the pirates take a big lead here and then the rum runner is just going to move towards the island. Now it's back to the Americans. So let's see what I want to do here. The Pawtucket still has her coin, but they want to take out the Freedom's Hand. She's really being annoying. So <laughs> let's see what they can do. The Pawtucket's going to go ahead and shoot here. She doesn't have a captain or reverse captain anything, but she's got solid cannon. So we'll see what happens. Um, so she's got a 2L and a 3S. I'm going to shoot the 2L first. Both are clearly in range. So here's the 2L cannon. This one's a 3. So it hits, and the Freedom's Hand is now dismasted. And then, I think they're not going to sink the ship. Yeah, the, the, the Gold Eagle is going to come out. Actually, no, the Gold Eagle is going to repair, because she'd rather repair first. So. So the Gold Eagle is given a repair action. You can only repair at your home island unless you have a shipwright, which allows you to repair anywhere, basically. So 
And then the Carolina is going to move here and then she's going to hit the reef. So reef is a terrain type and it's one of my favorites. Um, it's, my, it's my favorite uh, negative terrain type because it's not, they're not very good to encounter. So when any part of a ship or sea creature moves onto a reef, roll a d6. And then basically if it's lower than the number of mass the ship had when it's constructed, the ship loses a number of mass or segments equal to the difference. And then if, it's, if the difference is more than the number of mass remaining on the ship, then it becomes a shipwreck, which is pretty rare, but it's pretty cool when you see shipwrecks, but I wouldn't, uh, you shouldn't expect it to happen too often. So, so the Carolina, before she does her next move segment, she has to roll for the reef that she just went on to. So she gets a five. So since that's higher than three, the number of mass when the ship was constructed, there's no damage. And then I can continue moving with this segment here, the next move segment. And so she docks at the wild island, but she doesn't, she's not able to explore it yet. So that's the American turn, and now I'm going to go back to the Pirates. So, the Cutlass is feeling pretty good about her chances here, so she's going to go wreak some havoc and see what she can do, along with the Flotilla anyway. Actually, no, she's not going to go that way. Um, the Freedom's Hand has the Galley keyword, which, and you'll notice the oars there, basically it's very similar to the Oarsman ability where you can row at S speed when you have no mass remaining. So the Freedom's Hand, the bow is a little bit inward of the of the prow, I guess. Of, um, so she's gonna row, try to row home at S, which isn't probably gonna be fast enough. She might still be captured or sunk, but she can try. And then the Cutlass is going to move S plus L out towards the other island. And then the Rum Runner is as well. She's gonna go into the fog bank. So as soon as, a ship overlaps any any part of a terrain piece the effects are applied if, except on a whirlpool because you can you can decide when those affect you that's like the positive terrain but fog banks basically you become lost when any part of a ship or sea creature touches a fog bank the entire game piece must be placed within the fog bank as a free action the game piece's turn ends even if it could move farther that turn so the rum runner is done game piece in the fog bank is lost uh, and they can't shoot or sh be shot at, and they basically can't interact with any other ships at all, uh, including other ships in that same fog bank. So if, this, if the Carolina was in the fog bank, they couldn't shoot at each other either. So, and then they exit, but we'll get to that soon. So now it's the American turn again. Um, let's see what they want to do. The Gold Eagle, uh, she's going to go ahead and capture the Freedom's Hand because the Freedom's Hand doesn't have Norsemen. So now, by towing the Freedom's Hand, the Americans just came into possession of the ship, so now it's in their fleet, and they can immediately start using it. Which in this case, since it's a galley, it can row home. So the Freedom's Hand, since it's now in their fleet, it can be given actions this turn, it can be given a move action to row home right away. So that's one cool thing about capturing ord ships. Um, and then the Pawtucket was given a move action, so she docks home her coin. Any coins worth gold are automatically unloaded. Standard rules call for treasure to be placed face up in a two-player game, but face down is pretty much always better. So, And in this, this is not a standard game with 30 gold anyway. So, Alright, so the, the Carolina navigated the reef. Now on this turn she's ready to be given ex an explore action. They already know they're going to find the one there from the first island. Let's see what else they find. So, when you explore, you can look at all the coins on the island and then choose which to take up to your cargo capacity, of course. So, she's got five, couple, three twos, two ones, so not bad. Um, so, she's going to take, she's got all four cargo spaces open. She's going to take all the best coins here and leave the two ones. So... Just looking at it, it looks like the Americans can win if they get all of them. Because I know they've got 11, 12, 13, 14. So if they get all the rest of the gold, they could win by one. But if the Pirates get any more coins, uh, the Pirates will win. So, And that's kind of useful if you're playing a solo game. Or if you're playing a tournament game with 30 gold in play, you can, you can calculate how much is left. Which is pretty cool. 
Um, so Carolina was given an explore action. If I found a unique treasure, um, unique treasure will say on the card if it's placed face down or not. If it doesn't say anything, it's placed face up on the ship. It doesn't take up cargo space and you have to take it. If it says you can load it face down, then you have the option to take it or not. But if you do take it, it's loaded face down and it does take up cargo space. That's just a little note on UTs. There aren't any in this game, but uh, you'll probably encounter some. And they are fun to use, usually. So, American Churn is over. So the pirates are next. And I'll start with the, the fog bank here. The rum runner. Game pieces exit fog banks in random directions. When a game piece is given a move action to exit, roll a d6 before moving it, then place it outside the fog bank. Um, touching the number of, on the fog bank that matches the die result, it can face any direction away. It is no longer lost, and then begin moving the game piece from that point. So, so it doesn't take a move action. I mean, you have to declare a move action to get out, but it doesn't use up the whole action. So you can start moving as soon as you leave. Um, so I'll show you the fog bank up close. You can see the D6 numbers, markings on the edges, and the rum runner is going to leave. So she gets a five. So the five is over here, and then you can orient it, orient the ship in any any way in that in, in that regard. So she's going to go way over here. She's going to go to the Sargasso Sea, which is another train piece. That's why I surrounded the island with it, so I'd have to use it so I can demonstrate. Sargasso Sea. Uh, when you move wherever a Sargasso Sea, roll a d6, and then you compare it to how many masts or segments the thing when it had when it was constructed. And then, if it, the rating is more than the number of master segments, the game piece is tangled and may not be able to move. So in this case, bigger ships are better for Sargasso Seas, and then smaller ships are uh, worse, and then bigger ships are more susceptible to reefs, because you want to roll, you want to roll high for reefs. Or you want to roll, yeah. So the Rum Runner rolls a three, so she's fine. Yeah, so so since she rolled lower than the number of masts she had when constructed, she's not stuck. And then she's got the other S segment, so she's going to move and dock at the island. So, And it's not always recommended that you put terrain that close to an island. Um, you're actually supposed to do it S away, at least S away, but this game is more just a short demo, really. So, um, The next ship is the Cutlass. And the Cutlass is going to take the fight... Uh, since she has the flotilla, she's going to take the fight to the Americans here. The Cutlass doesn't have a captain, unfortunately, but the Widowmaker can shoot independently. And the Widowmaker's guns are not blocked by her own bulk, so she can just shoot any cannons she has in range, in which case all four are in range. So the Widowmaker has four cannons shooting at rank four, so she has to roll a five or six to hit. So that's one hit already. That's another hit. And this might sink it. Nope. Nope. So she needs five or six. All right, so two hits on the Gold Eagle. That ship is now uh, dismasted. And in this case, derelict, because she doesn't have an oarsman. So I'll dump the mast there. And that's the end of the pirate turn, because the Cutlass can't really do anything else. Now it's back to the Americans. So they do control the Freedom's Hand. So the Freedom's Hand is going to be given a repair action at home. Uh, the Pawtucket is going to get the same thing. And then the Carolina is going to move back home. But she has to roll for the reef on the way out once again. So, so a six. So the Carolina is not damaged. If she rolled a two, she would lose one mast. If she rolled a one, she would lose two mast. So it's just basic subtraction. So from, But it's from... The number of masts when the ship was constructed rather than currently, unlike, you know, boarding, for example. And then that's the American turn. So now it's back to the pirates. The Rum Runner is going to explore this island. She's got two ones, not too exciting, but she knows the Carolina took the best stuff, so. Um, let's see now. I think the. I think these are, these are just going to shoot. Because they can't shoot at these ships, so they might as well finish off the Gold Eagle. The Cutlass might capture the Gold Eagle if not for the Widowmaker, but she doesn't want to stop towing the Widowmaker, really. So the Cutlass is given a shoot action. She's got a couple two S's. So the first hit sinks the Gold Eagle. So when a ship sinks, 
you just remove it from play, it's eliminated, and uh, all the crew are gone as well. And in my case, I like to, I like when gold sinks too. You can split treasure in a two-player game, half and half, but I like to, uh, to have it sink with the ship because it's more realistic. And then that's the whole pirate turn. So now it's back to the Americans again. They're kind of gearing up for the final final part here, final part of the game. The Freedom's Hand gonna, is going to repair her final mast. And the Pawtucket is going to, she's going to take the fight to the pirates and she's going to ram the Cutlass. So I have to roll higher than the number of masts remaining on the Cutlass, so I have to roll more than a two. So a four will do it. So she loses one mast. And then the Pawtucket is going to go ahead. Now she's not going to board. She's going to defer the boarding party because she doesn't want to lose her helmsman. But the pirates, are, in that case, are going to go ahead and board because the Cutlass doesn't really need her explorer anymore. So the pirates don't really have anything to lose. So here's the pirate boarding roll since they initiated it. So six plus the one mast remaining is seven. The Americans start at three. Plus three is six. So the pirates win 7-6. The American helmsman is eliminated. So the Pawtucket doesn't have any crew left. And the Carolina is going to keep moving back home. And you can play terrain a few different ways. Um, like the reef, you could have ships um, only roll for the reef once, and then they don't have to roll when moving off of it. But in this case, you had to like reverse direction and everything. So I just had the Carolina... Um, basically roll for it twice. So that's pretty much what the Americans can do this turn. So it's back to the pirates and the, uh, the rum runner is going to move back here. And then I'm not going to, well, I guess I'll roll for the Sargasso. So you just see what happens. Okay. So five, so she gets stuck there. So if it's higher than a four in this case, um, she's stuck. And then she has to wait till next turn to try to free herself with a die roll. And then the Cutlass and the Widowmaker are going to keep the Pawtucket pinned. And they're just going to shoot away. Um, yeah, they're just going to blast away. So the Cutlass has a 2S. So she's shooting at the Pawtucket. So that doesn't hit. The Widowmaker has four cannons at four rank 4 in range of the Pawtucket. So that's a 4. So that misses. One hit. Two hits, nice. So two for three. Three for four. Wow. So the so the Widowmaker does well here and takes off all three masts on the Pawtuck hit. So at this point, the Americans aren't looking too good. The pirates are probably gonna win. Um, and that's the end of their turn. So now it's back to the Americans. What the Americans are happy about though is the Carolina getting home. Because she is able to dock home all of her gold. She's got 11 here. And then plus the one is 12. So they're only one behind the pirates. And the final two are in the rum runner. So the game ends when either all gold has been unloaded to home islands. Or when only one player has um, move actions left to give to any other ships. So if one player is eliminated, the game ends right away. You don't. There's no simulation rule where you can get the gold freely um, for the remaining fleet. And it's not how it works. Um, you can make a house rule if you want, but it's not how the game normally works. And uh, the Freedom's Hand still needs an action. She can't do damage by ramming, so she's kind of stuck on what to do. Oh, I know. She's going to go through the Whirlpool, and that'll be a good demo. So with the Whirlpool, this one's pretty simple, or at least it's shorter. When any part of your ship or a sea creature touches a whirlpool, you may choose to place it so that it touches any other whirlpool on the play area. If you do, roll a d6 after it is moved. A result of 4 to 6, I use 1 to 3, because you want to roll low for bad effects in this game, uh, or you want to roll high. Eliminate either one mast or segment, one treasure, or one crew from the game piece. So I'm going to move the Freedom's Hand right up here. She's trying to intercept the Rum Runner, because she's got the final coins. And then I'm trying to roll... I just changed the die roll because you almost always want to roll high in this game. So to try to roll low is kind of strange. So so I'd like to have consistency and have the bad effect be on the low roll. So in this case, it is a bad effect on the low roll. So Freedom's Hand loses a mast because she doesn't have any crew or treasure to eliminate. So she has to lose a mast. And then the Pawtucket is stuck. Um, so that's it. 
And then the pirates get to go again. And the rum runner is stuck on the Sargasso Sea. So if it's tangled, you can use its action for the turn to try to free it. D6 roll, add the current, add the current number of master segments to the result. If the result is more than six, you can it's untangled or yet orient it in any direction facing away from the Sargasso Sea and touching any edge of the Sargasso Sea. It, begin, it can be given a move action to move normally next turn. So if she wants to roll at least a three here to be unstuck. Oh, so she's still stuck. So she can't move. And then the pirates will... They're going to go home for the time being. The Cutlass might try to repair. And then... The Americans are up next, so the Carolina is going to try to rescue the Pawtucket. So she's going to move here. She's going to try not to let the Widowmaker shoot her. Widowmaker should have shot at the Pawtucket, but oh well, do it next turn. And then the Freedom's Hand, now in the American fleet, she's going to ram the Rum Runner. So she can't do damage by ramming, but she can try to board. And she has nothing to lose because the captain's already gone. So she rolls a two, so only three total. So the rum runner doesn't need to roll because she's got four masts. But the freedom's hand doesn't have anything to lose, literally. So nothing happens as a result of the board. And now it's back to the pirates. The cutlass will indeed repair. And then the Widowmaker is going to shoot at the derelict Pawtucket. Because she's got guns in range here. And give an action independently of the Cutlass. So I'm trying to roll a five or six again with the Widowmaker. Boom, so now the Pawtucket sinks. With that five, the Pawtucket is gone. And now, um, now the Rum Runner is gonna try to be on, get herself unstuck, untangled here from the Sargasso Sea. So she has to roll a three or higher to beat a six roll, and she does. So she's gonna be placed there, and then, like it said, she can be given moving again Next turn, and then it's back to the Americans. So the Carolina is going to go through the Whirlpool because she can't rescue the Pawtucket. She's going to go right here, try to intercept the uh, Rum Runner, but she has to roll for damage, and she gets a low roll, a one to three, so she loses a mast. So the Carolina is down to two, and then the Freedom's Hand. Um, she could shoot and try to trigger Parley, but the but the pirates aren't going to give away um, any of their gold because they need it to get home. So the Freedom's Hand is just gonna she's gonna board. So kind of skimping on the move actions, <laughs> but once you're experienced, you can kind of know where ships can move and you know which ships have more than one segment, so they can change direction after moving um, or after the first segment they can change direction again. So the Freedom's Hand is going to uh, ram the uh, rum runner up there and can't do damage by ramming since it's a galley but can certainly board and the Americans got a six so a total score is seven here and then the rum runner she needs at least a three up oh, she got a four so nothing happens Americans can't steal any coins now it's the pirate turn again and the cutlass is ready for action once more she's gonna go out here and defend her comrade here, her fleet mate, and it looks like, yep, with extended range, it looks like all four cannons on the Widowmaker are in range of the Carolina, so let's see what she can do here, 0 for 2, whoops, 0 for 3, and 0 for 4, so no hits there, but then the Rum Runner can start moving home or can continue moving home. And now it's back to the Americans again. So they're really desperate for this gold. The Rum Runner is only two two turns away from getting the gold home. So they gotta they gotta hurry up and hurry up and get some coin get the coins here and they gotta steal it. The Carolina Rams, in this case, can do ram damage because it's not a galley, but I needed more than a four, the number of masks remaining on the Rum Runner to take out a mass. So no masks are eliminating, eliminated via the ram. And then boarding party, Carolina is it. So the camera got cut off for some reason, but Carolina just lost a boarding party to the rum runner trying to steal the gold. 
and now the Freedom's Hand is going to do the same. So she's got one mast, so plus six is seven again. Let's see if she can succeed this time. Rum Runner is two, so six. So the, so the Freedom's Hand wins seven, six, and then one coin, the one here, goes to the captured Freedom's Hand in the American fleet now. And the Rum Runner is down to one coin, but the Americans need both to win, of course, as we know. Um, although the fleets wouldn't know that in the game, but that's all right, especially for a demo. And now it's the pirate turn, though. So the Rum Runner is going to continue moving home. So unless they can get the coin back now, they're going to lose. The Americans will. And it looks like the Cutlass is going to move just a little bit up here to try to block both ships. And then the Widowmaker is going to shoot. She's got all four cannons in range of the Carolina, so she's going to go ahead and shoot away. So she needs a five or six, so there's one hit. This is a one, so that misses. It's a four. So a one for three. And then two for four. So the Carolina loses two masts. So at this point it's down to the Freedom's Hand. And now it's back to the Americans. So they're going to see what they can do here. But looks like they can't quite... Well, with the galley keyword, you can also turn on the stern, just like with the schooner, schooner keyword. So at the end of your move action, you can turn on the stern in any direction. So with that, the Freedom's Hand can board again. And she gets another six. A really lucky ship here. So she's got seven total. And the Rum Runner gets a six as well. And that decides it. So the Rum Runner wins 10 to seven in the boarding party. The Americans, Carolina can't do anything. Rum Runner gets home. And with the coin, they now have uh, 14 gold. And then in a regular game, you would play it out to see who would win. But in this case of the shorter demo, I'm not going to do all that. Especially just for a one coin that at this point doesn't really matter. Um, but basically, if we pretend this was the, for the Americans, they would have, um, what, 13, I think. Yeah, 11, 12, 13. So the pirates would win by one, probably two, because they would get the they would probably get the coin from the freedom's hand. And uh, so that's the game. So the pirates win. And this was a short demo on the complete game rules. I went over some of the things that aren't in the basic and in the start here rules, I should say. Um, there's some stuff that I didn't go over in as much detail, but I'm gonna put a link to the descript in the description to the uh, complete game rules and. And I'm going to be back with more videos soon. And if you want more tutorials, I have the Start Here video up. And I'm going to have the, the Keywords playlist as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you take to the high seas and play pirates. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.